Everybody, this is Jonathan from Lehigh Valley Music and Sound, and with me today is Scott Aber of Positively Energized Productions. How you doing today? Very good. How are you? I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Scott Aber is an amazing DJ. Oh, and thank you. He's been in the. Uh, if you, you've never heard of Positively Energized Productions, it's probably because Scott is a very humble man, um, but he his expertise in the field is just very vast thank you you've been in the audio world for a very long time now uh let me think this is my 35th year wow started at the age of 12 believe it or not it was my first live dj event doing a sweet 16 for a very good friend of mine one of my best friends in the world and uh so and you were djing the event djing the event yeah. wow now I'm gonna I'm just gonna go straight for the juggler here just because um, to show you like how serious this is. You were on air with Oldies ninety nine, correct? I was, and that was a dream gig. I gotta tell you, <laughs> no, it was. It seriously was. I I was starstruck meeting Joey Mitchell. I tell you because Sound Celebration that was the DJ company. When I was up and coming in the 80s, you know, and so Joey, Freddie, Sen Freddie Frederick Sr., Jerry Dean, they were all the partners originally, you know, when it was formed. And uh, that that was the company in the Valley. And so to work under Joey Mitchell was uh, <laughs> that's, a dream come true. That's got to be that's got to be a dream job for for like almost every DJ out there to mm -hmm. to work on a radio station. So like tell yeah. uh, tell everyone out there like what is it like to to be a radio host? Uh, being uh, it can be a little difficult sometimes. I mean, a lot. I'll, I'll, first of all, let me step up a little bit. To most radio today, with the exception of morning shows, is voice tracked, and it's basically the hired voiceover for the station. You know, is in between every song, using the same phrases at every every period of each hour you know so being a live dj it can be a little difficult to come up with so radio now like modern modern fm radio is uh is all mostly pre-recorded it's not not authentically for the most part yes and so but back when i was doing it when djs were actually live which a lot of the stations still are mostly community radio um is still very live you know 24 7 th that it's on so the hard part with being a live DJ is it can be sort of difficult to come up with relatable content, you know, that relates to the music you're playing. That was a big thing at Oldies 99. We had a tablet in the studio where if you thought of something relatable to the real world, that's what we all wanted to say, along with the songs, not just announcing the title and artist of the song, because sure. these are oldies. Everybody knows them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, we grew up with them, so... Yeah. You know, somehow adding really, your own like personal touch to it, kind of like a content curator. Yeah, and I'll tell you who was one of the best people ever doing that was uh, Bill Marvin. Yeah, he was constantly reading the newspaper during his shift and, <laughs> and finding something in there <laughs> to just work it in. You know, is he was great. Nice. Yeah. So, um, going to, going to uh, going forward to positively energized productions. Mm -hmm. When was this production company born? Well, under this brand, it was born around 2007. Um, I've had different company names over the years. I've had a business partner for a few of those. And when I had my partner, his name was Carl Baker. He was also at Oldies 99, which is where we met. Um, we used to share the work at every gig. And it was great. You know, we were co-hosting it, co-spinning, and... It was just a great time. Yeah, I, I really miss having Carl around. You know, the, he he made them great. You know. And I uh, so so I emphasize uh, your experience in radio DJing uh, because and I and I mentioned this in a post prior to this interview that uh, it's 
not just uh, it's your expertise in audio and handling the audio as an audio engineer, making everything sound professional. So I mean, this this can span across weddings, corporate events, um, anywhere they need uh, a professional voice, so True. to speak. True. Yes. Yeah, uh, emceeing is a big part of especially weddings because you're announcing the bridal party and the very special moments. And there are some DJs out there who are strictly the engineer and they have a separate MC, you know, because that's just not their forte. I'm, I, I, I guess I'm lucky that people like you, when we were sound checking a little while ago, you said, I sound great, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've been told that. I've been complimented quite a bit on my emceeing and speaking. So, I mean, I try. You know, and uh, another person I have to credit for how well I'm doing, and that is another Oldies 99 co-worker, Vince McNally. McNally in the Valley, <laughs> he used to call himself. <laughs> um, that's not his real name, and today, sure. and today he is a professional actor. Um, he lives in Kentucky, I believe, with his wife, and uh, he's doing very well. Wow. Yeah. And he lent me um, a book on you know practicing public speaking and and taught me quite a bit and another good friend of mine dave who we always called the daver <laughs> <laughs> the daver he lent me um a, a little program where it was a book and cassette kit called the vocal advantage so and he he was another one very very helpful to me as i was up and coming yeah, yeah. and what types of things did you learn from uh like the public speaking book like how to project your voice or how to project and how to breathe from the diaphragm yeah you know in fact i had um i had a, a speech therapist when i was in grade school and in showing me the diaphragm breathing she took my hand and she said here feel my stomach and see the her breathing in and out and that that's how you breathe yeah I mean, so yeah it makes sense because uh if like you were to talk like like if I were to talk on the radio in my normal voice, kind of like I'm doing now, I guess it, it would sound kind of nasally and and not very appealing. Well, I mean, talking to you right now, I I think you sound fine. Thank you. Um, part of my MC presentation, it is a little different. Um, like I told you before we started rolling here, I did this bridal show a while back and. A girl that I've known a long, a lady I've known a long time. She does corporate video now, but she did weddings and she did my wedding, and we shared the bridal show booth together at this one event. And she was blown away. Uh, see, all the DJs in that bridal show got a chance to spin. So when I turned on the mic and did my whole presentation, she went, "What? Yeah, could you do the like, little sample you did earlier? Because it sounded right. really good." All right. Yeah. Well, this is actually inspired. <laughs> This is inspired by Freddie Frederick Sr., his style, and I, it's kind of a mimic, actually, but so it, was, it would kind of go like this. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please, we're about to begin the introductions. Yeah, that sounds like radio. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so all the studying and, and the books and everything, that, yeah. that definitely and the coaching, it definitely paid off. Yeah, I, I would like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it a long time. I love it. I still love it. Yeah. You know. What type of events do you specialize in for your DJ services? Well, that's just it. I, I don't really specialize in any type of event. I think a lot of DJs do, and most DJs will specialize, if you're a mobile DJ, that is, will specialize in weddings. If you're not a mobile DJ at all, you could strictly be a club DJ. You know, or strictly a radio DJ. You know, not every DJ branches out to other uh, types of things as far as being a mobile DJ. But when you're most mobile DJs specialize in weddings, and I, I honestly think it's, it's being done to death. I mean, the specializing in weddings, that is. DJs, photographers, you name it, they sp specialize in weddings. <laughs> <laughs> now, what exactly do you mean by the, by the mobile DJ? Well, doing different events, you know, do, going out to a hired venue to perform the birthday, the wedding, the graduation, you know, that's being a mobile yeah. DJ because you're, you're mobilized, you know, and your system is transported, you set it up and that's what being a mobile oh, DJ okay. is. Yeah. 
that's where the term I mean I guess play. it's understandable that, yeah. that a lot of DJs like to specialize in, in weddings and mm -hmm. whatnot because there's a lot of money in it oh absolutely and see that's something personally I find really weird because I mean there is a lot of money in being a DJ period a lot of DJs justify the higher cost of weddings because of there's supposed to be more work involved sure that and make, makes sense there is but there isn't for instance one of the things that a lot of djs claim is a step for weddings that's not a step for maybe a birthday or a corporate event or whatever is planning the itinerary i don't know any event that doesn't have an itinerary yeah i see what I you're mean, saying like there's yeah. there's always going to be i mean whether if it's a, a special birthday party uh, where there's a format to it, like maybe there's an announcement you have to make about someone's birthday or whatnot. There's still announcements, right? And <laughs> and you know we're gonna sing happy birthday, cut the cake, maybe do gifts, whatever. There's always something going on. Now sometimes uh, clients get confused about this, and they'll say, "No, we just want you to show up and play music," and they actually believe themselves. But then as the party gets closer, oh, so and so's coming. Make sure you have this song. We want to dedicate it to them. Blah 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 blah. And then, you know, so we have, to, again, that comes into planning, the music programming and the itinerary planning. Every event has an itinerary yes. and programming to be done. So saying it's only included for weddings when it's obviously included for everything else, like every time, I think that's where DJs both overcharge for weddings and undercharge themselves on other events because you're doing it anyway. Yeah. You know, so why are you like giving it away every place else? I don't, I don't, I just don't get that myself. I don't know. It, it's always, I, I always figured it was just a gimmick. Um, you know, it's the same as like uh, years ago, my, my mom wanted to buy, uh, she wanted to get a cake for uh, her wedding when she was marrying mm -hmm. my stepdad. And she loved this one cake at Walmart. I forget what, the, what type of cake it was from the bakery, but she was requesting it for the wedding and she and the lady in the bakery told her don't tell me it's for a wedding <laughs> because if you tell me it's for a wedding it's automatically like i don't know thirty dollars more or something crazy wow yeah so it's that's just and it really is a markup you know yeah so I mean, and there's some there is some justifiable reasons like there is some extra work involved on at, mm -hmm. at, uh depending on you know what the services are but it, it's, there's just markup too, right? And another, no, I, I've had D, fellow DJs will attack me on these things, points I'm making because like, what are you saying? With it? Yeah, well, I'm saying the truth, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And um, they'll bring up things like um, a ceremony, like if you if the reception's in this room, the ceremony's outside or in another room or something like that. Of course, that's going to cost more. Well, duh. But that's a that's because you're charging for the extra work, the setting up that other system, and it is a. If it was, let's just say it was a birthday, and you had to do the same thing, even run the remote speaker, you would charge more for that because it's extra work, it's extra setup. That's not wedding exclusive. Yeah. You know, so. Or if you're yeah. using extra hardware or gear that you wouldn't normally use. Exactly. Well, that's that could fall. That falls under uh, wear and tear. Yes. So, I mean, everything that you say, well, weddings involve this, wedding, not every wedding does. If the wedding involves that, then you're going to charge for the extra work. Absolutely. But a lot of weddings are smaller, you know, more intimate affairs, and you charge for the work. That's why I've, I've priced myself a lot differently than most DJs. In fact, um, I do, I run sound at one of the biggest facilities in the area I, five days a week. So I have a, I'm, I'm in this full time. And so gigs on the weekend are... What is his facility? Oh, I can't... You're not allowed to no, say? No, I'm not allowed to say. Oh, okay. But Because um, <laughs> now I'm intrigued. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but um, You guys are probably all intrigued, yeah, too. Yeah, and I apologize. I really do. <laughs> no, i got to keep my client confidential. But, oh, okay. Um, I respect that. But um, my point was going to be that, you know, working weekend gigs, which most of events are, birthdays, weddings, and things like that, that's overtime. Yeah. You know, or it involves me rearranging things and, you know, having to, you know, make some hiccups, if you will. You know, so, you know, that's that's worth uh, uh, 
my fee that I charge on, on top of my experience and talent, like you were saying, thank you again. So yeah, I, I, so I actually charge myself, um, I have a weekday rate, um, a Saturday rate and a Sunday rate, which I, I guess some DJs might do that. I don't know, but I know most of the ones around here are actually most DJs pure, not just around here, but uh, they 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 normally gig on the weekends, yeah. And they're and they're charging one price for the birthday or the corporate, another price for the wedding, and, and this is how they do. And I, again, I don't get that, <laughs> you know. So, you know, because basically all this this stemmed from uh, which type of events do you specialize in? So basically, mm -hmm. you're you're open to uh, all kinds of events. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. And one of the, you mentioned, and you have a very versatile radio voice so i mean oh, you, you. you can cover just about any event oh i appreciate that any event <laughs> that requires a a radio host basically yeah and see that's another thing i actually saw it was a, another dj he does videos for djs um on you know running sound and things like that and a point he made is when you're doing ceremony sound he was showing you what gear you should have and things like that and but he made a statement in this video that I could not believe I heard and that was I know you're a DJ you hate running sound I went uh, excuse me <laughs> what that's what we do we run sound and so that's why I realized oh, a lot of DJs are DJs they're all about the mixing and you know certain parts of it running live sound is not something they really consider and that I am more of a sound and all around sound engineer because I've done radio and studio production i i do live sound so yeah i'm a sound engineer as well as a dj mc and it never really hit me before that like really djs don't like <laughs> know that this is part of the job i think it just really <laughs> I, I think it really just depends on the uh on the individual yeah. and you know like a lot of people like you know like you me we started out small so we had to do everything mm -hmm. so you had no choice but to learn a little bit of everything you know, when I started out in video production, I had to learn about audio mm -hmm. because it's not like I could afford to hire a crew. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have a special audio guy running all my, doing all my audio stuff and then have a, you know, someone else specializing in color grading the footage uh -huh. and editing the footage. So I had to learn a little bit of everything. I don't want, I don't want to say I'm a jack of all trades. I, I'd say I'm a little bit better than that, but I have dabbled in all aspects of video production from audio editing and so on right oh and that's another um point i wanted to bring up um a lot of dj companies out there are walmartizing themselves that's a word i made up <laughs> I, I know exactly where you're going with this but i'll let you go with yeah. that i know what you mean yeah they're offering just about everything, everything. from yep. dj to photo booth to this thing other thing that's fine yeah if you have the resource the the talent and the resources to do it I am not complaining. I'm a one-guy operation, except for my CFO, which is my wife. <laughs> um, but I am, when you call me, I, I don't, or call or email me, I don't use bots. When you, it might take me a while to get back to you, but when I do, it's live from me. Yeah. I don't use bots. Um, it's going to be me, and I am the same guy who's going to be your DJ. So you're not talking to a manager or a rep at the company, and then this guy's coming out to, to do the job. No, it's me. You know who you're dealing with the whole time. And I stick to primarily audio. I do dance floor lighting and up lighting, and I do video monitors. If you want to do a slideshow presentation, and I do the either the projected monogram or we can even make that one of the slides in the slideshow. Yeah. But that's, that's it. I focus really on the music and the audio because, and fellow sound guy that you and I know even affirmed this that people will watch a bad video if the sound's good because <laughs> they can hear it that's you know, true the sound is what matters and I can even even when it comes to licensing music um, for reissue even the DJ uh, subscription companies know this because once the song hits a back catalog like it's not fresh anymore the DJ pulls the legitimate DJ pools cannot issue those songs on audio files only. They have to distribute them as video. Oh. Because the audio is more important and more profitable. Okay. Yeah. So going back to what you were saying about 
about uh, DJs Walmartizing themselves. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think it's because I and I and this is, this doesn't just apply to uh, DJ services or, or DJ businesses. I think it's kind of all all across the board. I think people a lot of times people are just afraid to niche down. Yeah, and and it's a very it's a big mistake because sometimes you know it's it's better to just be good at one specific thing, especially um, it, it it might it might involve more traveling. Mm -hmm. But if you specialize in, say, a specific type of music uh, and you spe specialize in learning, investing the time in learning about that type of music and that culture, that could serve very well in getting jobs, uh, get being hired by uh, clients for specific weddings and all kinds of events and parties. Exactly, yes. Um, like, there are, like, for me, I've never done... A mitzvah. Like okay, so, honestly, I, I wouldn't know what I was doing at a mitzvah. I, I don't know the formalities, the traditions. I could easily learn them, right? You know, right. but I would have to let the client know that this is my first time. Yeah. You know, so I'm sorry if things aren't what you quite expected, but you know, and you know, maybe maybe I give a little break on the price for that because of my na na naivety. Is that the word or inexperience? Sure. You know, yeah. Uh, and then you might have DJs that specialize in those types of events. Right. And they know exactly the the order of, of what takes place and, you know, what needs to be announced, the special, maybe special songs for certain uh, parts of the ceremony. Uh, but that's why you have people who specialize in things. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, it's like hiring a lawyer. Yeah. You don't just hire any lawyer. Um, you hire a lawyer based on what type of lawsuit you're you're pursuing you know um people make the same comparison you just made with doctors depending on what's going on with you you could go to a gp or you might want a specialist and a specialist will be more expensive sure because that's what they specialize in and you're not going to call the specialist and for an issue that you can go to a general practitioner for right you know yeah all right, well, I guess we'll get this interview closed out. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience before we end this show? Yeah, I hope that when you're looking for an audio technician or a DJ MC that you'll contact me at PositivelyEnergizedProductions.com. My phone number and email are on the website. Look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. All right, well, I want to thank you again for being on the show. It's been a delight. Thank you for having me. And absolutely, and I wish you the best. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next episode. See ya. <laughs>